Hello and welcome to this review of my Apco K935P V2 keyboard. This keyboard was a donation from a viewer, thanks again May. I've been wanting to cover a keyboard with Topra clone switches for a long time, so I'm happy I finally get to delve into this. Unfortunately, although they're often considerably cheaper than Topra keyboards, even these Topra clones tend to be quite expensive. The Niz Atom or Plum keyboards, for example, are still around $130, and the Apco is priced very similar, which put a bit of a barrier between me and reviewing one until now. I do have some Topra keyboards to compare it to, thankfully, such as a Real Force and a Type Heaven, and I'll be comparing it to them during the course of this review. In fact, I had to switch to both the Real Force and the Type Heaven for a few days after the testing period to really get a good feel for what I wanted to say about these switches, because surprisingly, I found that the board was not what I expected and notably different from their Topra counterparts. Now, just to be clear on one thing, I'm not 100% sure whether these Topra clones are in fact NIS switches, as it's not really specified anywhere with any certainty that I could find. I think it's very likely that they are, but I just don't know for sure, as none of its third-party product pages is more specific than that it's a capacitance non-contact switch, and the switch has no identifying markings that I can see. Moreover, Apco's own site makes no mention of this keyboard or related models at all, neither under their current products nor under their legacy ones. They do have an upcoming model called the K995PV3 with capacitive switches, but those are Nopos and they don't look like these. These do look like Nizzes though, so I think there's a good chance that they are. So I'll kick off with the key feel straight away, they're weighted very similar to Topra's 45 gram switches, although NIS at least do do 35 and 55 gram versions. They feel slightly stiffer than the BKE Redux Ultra Light Domes, but lighter than BKE Light Domes. The tactility is similar to Topra, but feels more solid or unified somehow. The Topra switches feel like the tactile bump is more distance from the key travel. I can't explain it in a better way, unfortunately. The overall feel is quite similar to Topra's 45 gram switches, but I honestly prefer the Abco version. They also sound considerably better than Topra. Listen to this. BKE domes sound even rattlier than stock Topra, so the Apco is a clear winner here. I think it's because they're factory fitted with silencing rings, while the Topra switches still have that rattly upstroke. The Apco switches do have a bit more wobble than Topra, and they're easier to accidentally actuate during gaming, I've found. This did happen every once in a while. It's not as bad as, for example, Cherry MX Red, or especially Razer's Libra switches, but it was noticeable. Now, maybe I just subconsciously prefer the Apcos because the sound is so much better, but I do prefer these switches over Topra overall. They're nice, I like them. The build quality of the board itself is actually very good. It comes with a metal top plate, and not one of those flimsy pieces of shit that you see on a lot of budget keyboards, but an honestly quite thick metal unit. I think it's aluminium, or aluminum in Imperial units. It weighs 870 grams in total, which is not a huge amount, but also not bad for a TKL. There is also almost no flex in the keyboard at all. This is really quite rare. I don't see too many modern keyboards that are this rigid. The keyboard has bezels, albeit not huge ones, and the keys are sunk slightly below the mounting plate. It's somewhere in between normal mounting and the floating switch design. Overall, I think that should the keyboard fall on its side, the switches would have reasonable protection. One very annoying thing is that the keyboard casing is held together entirely by hidden clips that I had great difficulty loosening, so I can't inspect or show you the insides, unfortunately. I hate it when manufacturers do this. It's a big fuck you middle finger to serviceability, in my opinion. Possibly, this is because it's marketed as being waterproof, which is a big claim to make, to be honest. I tried that out once with a Hall Effect keyboard that was supposed to be waterproof, but it turned out to not actually be that, so I'm not going to test it this time, or at least not in this video. It comes with a braided USB cable, which seems like it's pretty good quality, feels nice at least, and a three-way cable gutter that works very well. Overall, not bad. The keycaps are thick PBT, but they have lasered rather than die-sublimed legends, which is why they're a bit fuzzier than normal and not very high contrast. So they're not super high spec or anything, lasered lettering tends to not last very long, but I guess the fact that they're PBT will prolong their lifespan drastically compared to ABS. 
Also, these keycaps are Cherry Profile. Woohoo! There were also Cherry Mount, which I guess is a big advantage for those who want to mess around with custom keycaps. It's funny, I can still remember the days when the Cooler Master Nova Touch was being sold, and people were going nut balls over it because it was Topru with MX Mount. <laughs> Man, <laughs> feels like ages ago now. The keycaps do have some cool secondary legends though. A lot of them look like box drawing characters, which seems very 80s to be honest, but there are also a bunch of Asian characters in there. Maybe they're Korean Compose characters or something, as Abco is a Korean brand. The board has no backlighting other than near the lock lights, such as this. It's a rare case of functional backlighting. It's overall an okay looking board in my opinion. I'm not sure I like these shapes on the mounting plate to be honest. And I'm too traumatized from having to use a Mac at work all day long to truly appreciate the white and metal color scheme. But admittedly it's a clean, not too showy look. Possibly because it's not marketed as a gaming keyboard. Overall, it's a good keyboard. Perhaps barring the styling, which I do think is better on the real force, I don't see why you'd spend an extra hundred or so on a genuine Topra board unless you really wanted that variable weighting or one of their adjustable models. Overall, personally, I actually prefer this one over a real force, although it could do with a slight stiffening of the domes, just a few grams, to avoid those accidental triggers. I like the feel and especially the sound a lot better though. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.